He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the labors increase. To added affliction he addeth his mercy. To multiply trials his multiply peace. His love has no limit, His grace has no measure, His power no boundary known unto men. For out of His infinite riches in Jesus, He giveth, and He giveth, and He giveth, again when we have exhausted our store of endurance when our strength has failed ere the day is half gone when we reach the end of our hoarded resources the father's own giving has only begun. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His love has no boundary known unto men. For out of the infinite riches in Jesus he giveth and he giveth, and he giveth again. Today's scripture is from John 5, 19 to 21. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. Good morning, friends. We want to greet you again from St. John's United Methodist Church in Tucson, Arizona. Glad that we can come into your presence through the media of this video. As I was reading the portion of scripture that Donna read just a few moments ago, I became conscious of the fact that we're living in a time with our shutdown. People are telling us, whether it's from our church officials or our public pol political people, that we've got to be innovative and find new ways to cope with this situation we're facing as a result of the COVID virus. As I read this passage, from John's Gospel, it catches my eye that Jesus got himself into a lot of trouble because he dared to be innovative. He dared to do things that the Jewish religious leaders of his day would never think of doing. And they felt that if they didn't think of doing it, then no one else should all either should do it either. But we find that Jesus was prone to do things that they did not agree with. Yet in our text, notice that Jesus declares the exact opposite of what I've just said. In verse 19, he clearly states, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, that's what he does. The Son also does it in like manner, for whatever he does, meaning the Father, the Son also does it, 
in like manner. Now, when Jesus said that he could do nothing of himself, he was asserting that there were certain parameters around his life and his ministry. Jesus was not free to do as he pleased. He existed and he ministered in the context of an intimate, mutual relationship with his Father. So this relationship limited Jesus to do only what he witnessed that his Father was doing. Now you might ask, could Jesus have done things other than what he saw his Father do? And I dare to say, yes, he could have. He could have stepped outside of those boundaries of his love relationship with the Father. But he would have had to step outside of the will of his Father to do it. Jesus was human, just as you and I are human. He had a will that often pulled him in a certain direction to do what he thought would be good to do. But Jesus had made a commitment to his Father so that as long as he was here on earth, he was going to do what was pleasing to the Father. Listen to what he says in John chapter 4 and verse 34. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Again in John 6, 38, Jesus said, I am come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. That was his commitment, his purpose, his desire from beginning to end. He had one objective, and that was to do the will of his Father and to please him. Now consider for a moment the scope of the ministry that this encompassed for Jesus. He could do whatever he saw his Father doing. And if you question the boundaries of that limitation, note that in verse 21, where Jesus says that as he sees the Father raise the dead, he too will give life to whom he pleases. That makes me question myself why I would ever want to do my own will and have my own way in life. Why I would rather do what I want to do when I could have the unlimited power to do whatever I witness my Heavenly Father doing. Do you understand how much we deprive ourselves of God's best when we fight to have our own way? Am I prepared to explain to God on Judgment Day why I chose to have my selfish desires when I could have experienced all that He was doing before my very eyes? Here's the ultimate challenge to our sanctification, our consecration. It is a never a decision that will deprive us of the pleasures of sin for a season. Rather, it is a decision that will open heaven's floodgates to enjoy all that God is doing, all that I can participate with him in doing. This is where I want to spend my life. Let us pray. O oh Lord, Help me to see what you're doing. Help me to get a glimpse each day of your work and give us all a passion to desire to participate in what you are doing and the work that you are completing. And Father, forgive us for cheating the way we cheat ourselves by wanting our own way instead of your best. 
we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.